Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today we'll be demonstrating how to create this fun Chanel style handbag cake. So you'll need a square cake for this particular project and I've used an 8 inch square. I'm cutting it down so that I have a large rectangle and then a skinnier rectangle. And I'm sticking it to my square cake board with some ganache. Make sure to add the two larger um, rectangles towards the bottom. And again, just filling in with dark chocolate ganache, and I'll have the recipe for that in the description box below for you guys. Then layer the skinnier ones on top, and we'll be carving the shape of the handbag cake. But I want to make sure that it's nice and solid so it's a bit easy to cut. So I'm going to pop it into the freezer for about 10 minutes, and then I'll take a large serrated knife. This is my cake knife. And I'm trimming it down so that it's like a um, a standing triangle sort of shape, or like a cone kind of shape. But only on one side, if that makes sense. Basically, we're going from really skinny to really um, wide at the base. Don't be stressed if there is a big gap between your small cake and your um, larger one at the bottom. You can fill that in with the offcuts, as I'll be doing here. So a bit less of um, cake wastage this way. I'm going to add some ganache into that gap and then press in a cutoff piece. Use gloves to keep it all nice and sanitary and if any of your pieces fall off during the cut, you can stick them back on with that ganache. Once you have the general shape of your bag, you can create a crumb coat. So I've just used ganache for this. It was just a lot easier and I'm going over nice and thin all the way around including the sides as well and then just using my spatula to smooth it out roughly you can go side to side and then up and down and then pop it into the fridge to set for about 20 minutes or into your freezer if you like for about 10 minutes after your ganache has set nice and firm, you can go on with a second layer of a ganache or you could add some buttercream into it. And the benefit of that is that it gives you a little bit more time to work with it and it smooths a lot easier, I believe, in my experience anyway. Then take an acetate sheet and go across and above as well. Do the same for the sides. So going, sorry, for, we're kind of smoothing it up, down and left to right. Create sharp edges if you can by bringing that lip to the middle of the cake, cleaning up that cake board and then back into the fridge to set completely. That'll take another 20 or so minutes. I decided to go with a red bag so I've taken some red fondant with some cornstarch and I'm rolling it out to about 3 or so millimeters in thickness. You can take a, a embossing tool, this is like a diamond print pattern and I'm just pressing it into the fondant. You don't want to press too hard though, otherwise you will cut the diamonds. You just want to imprint or emboss. You can cut this down to size and then press it onto your cake and allowing it to stick with a little bit of water behind the fondant. So you can apply the water straight to your now firm buttercream. Cut off the excess with a sharp knife or a scissors and continue on to the other side. From here I'm actually going to take another larger panel and go across the cake. And you could technically leave it as is, maybe just add a zip at the very top and it'll look like one of those zip bags. Or you could add a flap over the top as well, totally up to you. Trim down the edges and the sides with a scissors. I found that it was a lot more accurate this way and it gave me sharper edges by using a scissors rather than a knife. I decided to go on with a flap. So I've taken some red fondant, rolled it to a nice three millimeters or so in thickness and just cutting a general shape of a flap. So basically it's a rectangle, but one side has rounded corners. Then you can take a quilting tool, which is like a, a wheel that gives the impression that you have stitch lines in your fondant and use something straight like a ruler or a frosting scraper to help guide it down the sides. I'm freehanding this section to connect the two so that it kind of curves along with the edges. 
work really slowly for best results and then drape it over your cake as far down as you like. You can stick the two together with a little bit of water and then trim down the edges. For the chain I've taken some fondant but I highly recommend you use gum paste instead. It's just a lot stronger and it'll hold its shape better. This is a silicon mold and I've dusted a whole bunch of cornstarch into the mold and also around my little um, fondant roll here. Press it nice and firmly into the mold, cut off the excess and then turn it upside down and gently peel back nice and taut on that silicon to release your fondant. I stuck it to my cake with just a little bit of water. The weight of it might get them to sort of crack and fall off each other. Not so much if you had gum paste though. If it does happen, it's a very easy fix. You can just stick it together with a little bit of water. Connect it with a material handle. Again, just stitching in the sides and then creating the little logo with a circular ring. I'm going to cut that in half, intertwine the two and then stick it together with water and it makes a Chanel looking logo. Stick it to your cake with a little bit of water, making sure it's scented. And then take some vodka and some edible gold luster dust, create an edible paint and paint two coats over everything that is golden. You can also take a boning tool here and really indent those lines to make it look a bit more like a pin cushion i.e. there's a lot more dimension to it rather than just a line through the cake. It actually looks like it's made of material. And then at the very end, you can steam it with a little bit of hot water in a handheld steamer to remove any of that extra cornstarch and to also make it glossy. Having said that, it will not remain glossy as it dries, it'll dry matte again. But um, there is a special cake applique that you can add. It's like a spray that is edible and it gives your cake a sheen. So you can look that one up on Google if you like. I'm not too sure what the product is, but it does exist. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll catch you again in the next one.